I have thrown thousands of bowling balls in my life. But I've never made my own. Until now. How do you even make a bowling ball? The mold is then pumped full of a special white liquid. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. It's liquid plastic. What did you think I was talking about? Anyway, the molds full of industrial strength chiz will solidify around the core over a series of days. Then it's time to remove the cores from their molds. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make a mold of a bowling ball. So I just ordered a silicone mold kit that'll be here in four days. So I'll see you in four days. Four days later. So we are making a mold of the Rotogrip clone, which is ironic because we're cloning the clone. <laughs> anyway. I've never tried this before, so this should be interesting. Gloves match my shirt. All right. We need to cover the entire bowling ball. There has to be a faster way. Mm. Genius. Let's go, technology. This liquid looks very sus. All right, so the bowling ball is now approximately halfway submerged in the mold solution. Now we have to wait 24 hours and come back and do the last half. So I'm going snowboarding. Well, that was fun. The first layer of the mold is officially complete. It's been a full day and the mold is set so we can start on the second half. So there is the first half of the mold. So round two of an hour of mixing and pouring silicone mold. I brought my cat. I hope this drill doesn't scare her away. I think it might. We'll find out in about two seconds. Mama's no! It scared her away. <laughs> I'm spinning. Here we go, the last pour of the mold. All right, I lied, there's still one more. Dang it! It should be the actual last pour. How is it still not? 
All right, this should be the actual, actual last pour. Mm. Well, it might still be too, be, be too thin. We still need one more just in case. All right, that should definitely do it. Maybe I'll do one more just in case. All right, so that's the last pour for sure. Now it's go away for 24 hours. Let this do its thing. We can come back tomorrow and work on part two. All right. The next day. So the two halves were supposed to be able to be separated easily. It seems like they got fused together somehow. So I think I did something wrong. The next day. All right, so the way I see it is I have two options. I either need to cut the mold in half and risk losing part of the mold and making an oddly shaped bowling ball, or I need to get the mold to give birth to the bowling ball through that little hole, which I don't know if that's possible, but I have constructed a little ghetto jaws of life here and we're going to try to see if we can pull it out of that hole somehow oh my god bro oh hell no i guess we're going to cut it in half and risk ruining the molds but i don't see another option we could also break the bowling ball and pull it out chunk by chunk that could be an option. Should I break the bowling ball? We're getting close. I can almost taste it. Oh. <laughs> and there we go. My fingers and my thumb. <laughs> Why does it look so wrong? All right, so now that we have the mold all by itself with no bowling ball inside of it, we once again need to mix stuff. So our mold is finally full of epoxy resin. So the curing time says it takes 72 hours to totally cure and harden, but we're gonna give it a full week just in case because this is super dense. I don't think it's meant to be used in such a huge mass, but we're doing it anyway. We're giving it a week to harden and we'll come back and pry out of here. So I'll see you in a week. All right, it's been almost a week and it feels pretty hard. So, 
Unfortunately, this time we can't destroy the bowling ball to get it out, so we have to cut open the mold. So I have my trusty Japanese sword, and we're gonna get this bowling ball out. All right, change of plans. Power tools. <laughs> it's not that funny. Oh yeah, let's go. There we are. My thumb is already molded into the ball perfectly. We just need to install some grips. Nice. So much work. Finishing off with a 4,000 grip pad. All right, so the homemade bowling ball is weighing in at 12.6 pounds. 12.6. It's been almost a month, but we finally got our Roto Grip clone clone. So there is a slight flat spot on the side of the ball right here. I'm hoping the ball doesn't roll over it when I throw it, but we'll find out right now. All right, so we're here with the clone of the Roto-Grip clone. But first, we're gonna warm up with a regular ball and see what the lanes are doing. So we got the hype solid. Jeez. All right, so we're now decently lined up with the hype solid. It's time for the first shot with the clone of the clone. It's definitely rolling over the flat spot. Ah. Oh. Oh. You see your ready? You might be able to get away with it if you tilt your hand all the way this way. Oh. That was actually good. <laughs> All right, that might be the play. I don't think the other way is the play. No, definitely not. All right, so the ball does roll to a flat spot when I bowl normally, and you can hear that loud thunking when it goes down the lane. So the only way for me to throw this is to throw it two-handed and twist my wrist so it kind of misses the flat spot, rolls over it this way. So that's what we're going to do, and the game starts now. It still rolls over the flat spot. You can hear it picking up on the lane and thunking. Oh man. My spare ball, hype solid. Not a very good start for the homemade bowling ball. Over under 150 for this game. Oh. 
Oh my gosh. It's like funking and bouncing. Ah, so bad. All right, so this happens off camera, so you can't see it, but you can kind of hear it. An African-American lady approaches me, looks me dead in the eye, and asks me a question that totally throws me off. Oh man, I'm so caught off guard, the only reply I can think of is... I do love chocolate. And then I quickly run away from the interaction to go bowl. Oh, jeez. And throw it in the freaking gutter, man. <laughs> Don't flirt with me when I'm bowling. I get nervous. I was distracted by the chocolate. That's a better shot. Hook. Oh, man. It also doesn't hook nearly as much as I thought it would. Since it is fully resin, I thought it would curve a little bit more. But we're not seeing too much action out of it. Brooklyn. Yes. Our first strike with our homemade bowling ball. Let's go. Pocket. Yes. Our first double with the homemade bowling ball. Let's go. We strike out, we still have 233. We could still possibly have a pretty good game. Oh, what am I doing? Man, that was an awesome leave. Three. Ah, man. Ah, oh, there goes our 230. Now we only have a 199 maximum. Carry. We could be on a five bagger, but we had a five eight ten. What? Alright, we salvaged a decent game considering I guttered on a spare. I guttered five on a spare, that's, that's pretty gnarly. One seventy seven. Not terrible, but we're done with this ball for now. So I now hold the world record for the highest game ever bowled with a homemade bowling ball. And I think I can use this mold again. I think I want to try to make another one where the, the flat spot doesn't exist. I think I know how to do it. And I also want to try to put a core inside. So let me know if you guys want to see that. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the merch at 220avg.com. We got some brand new 220 shirts on there. This is my favorite design so far. I'm not a huge fan of the huge logos, so I really like these ones. It's pretty slick in my opinion. So. Yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.